Hello everyone and welcome to the third lesson of the Teens Cornerstone Connections brought to you by the teenagers from the Nairobi Central Seventh-day Adventist Church. This week's lesson is entitled Law and Love Revisited. Our panelists include Silas, Steve, and Seth, and our wonderful teen teacher, Teacher Jonan. We also have some wonderful music for you, played by Amy and accompanied by Ashley. So I really hope you're going to enjoy this, and I also hope that you get to experience God's presence and know what he wants to tell you today. Thank you. Hello and welcome again to the Teens Cornerstone Connections lesson. Today we are doing lesson four. Lesson four is Law and Love Revisited. But before we begin, I'd like Ms. Steve to pray with us. Okay, let's believe and pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, we come unto you once again, thanking you for this beautiful day that you've given us. Thank you for the opportunity to learn and to study your word. And I pray that you may be with us as we undertake the learning of your word, O oh Father, and that you may enable us to come out with something that will help us throughout our daily endeavors and our lives in general. Forgive us of our sins and protect us, for this is my humble prayer, believing and trust in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. 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 Thank you for that. So uh, we'll start our introductions, and then I will move straight to the lesson. This time I'll start from my right side. Mm -hmm. Hello, everyone. My name is Steve. Mm -hmm. Hello and happy Sabbath to our viewers. My name is Seth Ruben Mokaya and I'll be taking you through um, what do you think section and also the key text. All right, thank you, Seth. And my name is Silas and I'll be taking you through the inter and out of the story. Thank you. And my name is Jonan. I'll be uh, guiding you guys throughout the whole lesson. 
So before we start the lesson, just a brief background or synopsis so that you know where we are. In our lesson today, we are going to see some of the last words that Moses spoke. So in the previous quarter, the very last lesson that we learned, we saw that Moses had been instructed by God to draw water, to speak to a rock, so that he can give the Israelites water when they were in the wilderness. But Moses, in his anger, he decided to strike the rock. And so in our lesson today, we see how the Lord punishes Moses. So God told Moses that he's not going to enter the promised land, but he allowed Moses to see the promised land and what is going to happen to the Israelites once they entered Canaan. That is what you're going to learn today. And uh, Moses had been told by God to just um, recite the laws again to the Israelites before he leaves and chooses another leader. But now uh, let us jump into the lesson for today and we'll start with the what do you think section the what do you think section so if you're with your lesson you can just go to the what do you think section today we'll be studying uh, the book of deuteronomy chapter 4 to chapter 6 and uh, patrick's and prophets chapter 42 so we'll jump what do you think section seth take us through that okay so um the what do you think section um i'll basically ask a question um, if I keep God's commands I will experience optimal happiness so um, I went to do further research on the meaning of optimal happiness which means to feel happy as happy to feel happy as we can feel for as long as possible. Mm -hmm. So I'd like um, to ask um, someone to kindly um, explain more about um, the meaning of optimal happiness and what it means to you. For me, it means that, um, let's take uh, uh, my studies for example. Mm -hmm. I recently did uh, my exams and all in all, I know it went well. Mm -hmm. So I'm just waiting for the results to come out. Then I'm just happy that I did, I did my, I basically did my best right. to that. And the other thing is yesterday, I was actually, I attended a luncheon with mm -hmm. my fellow basketball players mm -hmm. um, and it was basically a nice experience. experience with, right. Yeah, so the mm -hmm. other... So probably before Seth, you continue, I um, probably can just uh, like ask a question, okay? Uh, so you can just agree or disagree with these questions, okay? Uh, the Bible can be a helpful guide when facing a difficult decision. When you're making a difficult decision in your life, the Bible can really help you. Agree or disagree? What do you think, Seth? Is it true or false? Um, then we me, get someone else to give us their thoughts. Yes, sir. For me, I think it's true. It's true. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Steve, what do you think? Can the Bible be a great help when you're making a difficult decision? Yes, I believe that it is true. I agree with it. Mm -hmm. But what you find out in most cases is that while it is true, mm -hmm. not many people go ahead and do that. Follow it. All right. You see? Mm -hmm. So you'll find that someone knows that they have to consult the Bible or they know something is biblical mm -hmm. and has talked about the exact same topic they are thinking about in their mind. Mm -hmm. But they go ahead and do something else. All and right. This goes against God's word and everything that they have Okay. Learned. All right, thank you for that. Now, there's, there's another um, question here. Seth probably can read it for us. In the what do you think section, the very last question, they're very interesting. You can just get a few thoughts and then we can move on. Oh, okay. Um, the very last um, question for the what do you think section, mm -hmm. it says, females are better, better at keeping God's law than are men, males. <laughs> well, that's a very interesting statement. But before you get your thoughts, <laughs> silence. Females yes. are better at keeping God's law than are males. Do you agree or disagree? <laughs> or not sure? This is the third option. I'm not sure. <laughs> not sure. 
Seth, agree, disagree, not sure. Basically, I'm not sure. You're not sure. That. Okay, yeah. Steve. <laughs> I'm going to say I disagree because, you disagree. Uh -huh. because uh, it all boils down to the individual. Mm, you see? Mm. So you cannot judge uh, the ability to keep someone's law based on someone's gender. Like gender you true. see? So mm. I believe it's more of the individual aspect rather than a broad spectrum of, of uh, can I call it, what's the word? Uh, assigning values or to different also just based like the criteria like how where yeah. you lie right yeah. uh -huh. okay um so yeah i mean god gives us all equal measures of judgment and uh, making decisions so you can't just really say because someone is female or male that they're better at keeping the law than the others yeah right uh, the word i was looking for was stereotypes stereotypes yeah, not thank you. stereotypes <laughs> to people all right yeah. yes now uh, moving on okay so we just done a bit of a what do you think section i'd like silas read for us you can just open the book of matthew chapter 22 verse 37 to 40 and as you're getting there i'll just um get some we'll get some insights on what the lord said in matthew 22 verse 37 to 40 but before we get there every sabbath every lesson that we study we have a fundamental belief and the silas gets our verse our fundamental belief is belief number 19 and we're talking about the law of god so the law of God is what guides us as human beings. The law of God is meant to help us live healthy and uh, sin-free lives. You know, the law is like a mirror from what we, we know. When you look at the law, it shows you your faults or it shows you that the path you're heading to might lead you to committing a fault later on. So the law just guides us into having a perfect walk with the Lord. And at times we see the laws as very hard things to do now let me give an example there are so many bizarre and weird laws around the world okay so i'm just going to read some of the very weird laws and just tell me do you think these laws are true or i'm just making my things up right now one of the bizarre laws i know is that it's illegal to chew gum in uh, let me remember the country in singapore you cannot chew gum in Singapore. That is a law. Okay? The, I'll, I'll tell you the reason why I'm telling you these weird laws around the world. So it's illegal to chew gum in Singapore. In Greece, it's illegal to walk in hills in those protected places. You know, Greece has very many old monuments and stuff. It's illegal to walk in those places while you're wearing heels. Now, in Scotland, it is a law that if someone asks to use your washroom, you shouldn't allow them to, whether they are a stranger or not. That is the law. Now, this is, a very, uh, this, is this country where I'm sure the women there must be very happy, the wives. In Samoa, <laughs> it is illegal for a husband to forget their wife's birthday. You can actually Wait. be jailed for that. Do you think that's true or false? <laughs> or do you think I'm making up these laws? No, I know like there are crazy laws that uh -huh. exist in the world. like. I think it's Japan mm -hmm. or one of those countries close to Japan mm -hmm. that you, if you can't die without knowing where you're going to be buried. Yes, that is actually another law. I, I read about it. Yeah, you need like before you die, you need to have like a burial place, yeah, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. And then there's also a country where you're not allowed to have a dirty car. That's in Russia. Yeah. yeah. So there are these weird laws, but one might wonder why do they have these laws that do not make sense at all now let me give an example like for that in russia you cannot drive around in a dirty car you know why because the police need to see your license plate and if your car is dirty the license plate number is covered so most of these laws have a reason behind them now in singapore chewing gum is illegal because of the way people dispose the gum it's thrown on the floor you step on it it sticks on your shoe it just makes the whole place messy in Greece, people are not allowed to wear heels in uh, museums and protected places because the heels destroy the pavements that are very ancient and historical. Now, in Scotland, I don't know the rationale behind you have to let someone use your washroom, but that, that's just basic courtesy, right? Samoa as well, 
I think uh, making it illegal for you to forget your wife's birthday, they're just enforcing that you need to have a good relationship with your wife. Okay? So these are laws that at times we see that they don't make sense. And the Israelites also thought some of the laws that the Lord gave them did not make sense. But every single law that the Lord gives us is meant for our own good. Silas, read for us Matthew 22. It says, Jesus said unto him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Mm -hmm. On these two commandments hung all the law and the prophets. Thank you. That's verse 40? I've done. I've That's 40. All right. Thank you. So Jesus basically summarized the Ten Commandments that the Lord had given to Moses and the Israelites in the desert into two. Okay, into one, basically. The commandments just all are encompassed in love. But then he splits them into two, love for God and love for man. But when you look at the Ten Commandments, that's actually how they're divided. The first to the fourth commandment, you know, you shall have no other God beside me. I have to remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. All those are laws meant to show that you love God. Now, when you come from the fifth commandment, honor your father and mother, all the way to the tenth commandment, you shall not covet, you shall not bear false witnesses, the ninth and tenth. Those are basically to guide how you love your neighbor. So all these laws are based out of love and we know that God is love the commandments just show us the character of God and when Christ came to earth Christ just came to show us how to obey these laws some people might argue and say oh because Christ came to earth we now do not follow the Old Testament laws because we're now in the New Testament but Christ himself says in the book of Luke I have not come to abolish the laws but rather to fulfill them Right. So Christ kept the laws in himself. Now, as we move on, Seth, read for us the did you know section. Okay. Um, the did you, did you know section. The, the Hebrews term of, for law is Torah. This is, this often refers to the first five books of the Hebrew scripture and includes the in, in idea of direction and inform, in, instruction, instruction according to the Jewish traditions. There are 313 laws contained in the Torah, 365 negative commandments and 248 positive commandments. There are various types of laws such as moral, ceremonial, serial, civil, and health laws. When, the, when studying the Bible today, it is important to de distinguish by carefully looking at the context of the page. What type of law is being referred to in adequate in Israel honor all the laws where command Con command considered to be commands from God. Thus, the Jews of old uh, did not distinguish between the various kinds of laws and hid them, hid every law to be created. All right. Yeah. Thank you for that, Seth. So basically, the Hebrews they followed each and every law that was given to them. Now, when you see, like, right now, okay, in our country, we have laws that govern how we deal with fellow men. You, know, you should not kill, you should not steal from other people, and all that. But then we also have laws about health, health regulations. You know, in our country, we have laws that govern 
the amount of noise you can produce when you have a party. Others, if you fail to you know, abide by those laws, you can get arrested. Okay? So the Israelites had the same kinds of laws. Now, Silas, you can read for us the key text, and then you can uh, move on to the story now. The, okay, key the, text. Te mm -hmm. the key text says, Now therefore your God is God. He is, faith he is the faithful God, keeping his gov covenant of love to a thousand generations of those who love him and keep his commandments. Mm -hmm. well, what book does that come from? Deuteronomy 7 verse 9. Deuteronomy 7 verse 9. So that's the Lord basically telling Moses that he honors those who keep his commands. And he also dishonors those who do not obey him. Okay, Silas, just give us a brief explanation of what our story today is about. Our story today is about the decrees that Moses gave to the Israelites and how he was telling them to uphold the law, the Ten Commandments. And these Ten Commandments were for their good, to benefit them. And if they followed these Ten Commandments, they would have peace in the land and they wouldn't have trouble with their neighbors. So the, what the lesson is trying to say here is that the laws we have are for our benefit, not anyone else. So if we follow the laws, we are the ones who benefit. Right. Yeah. And uh, just to bring out another concept, thank you for that, Silas. When, when the Israelites, every time they obeyed the laws, we see that God blessed them. When the Israelites you know, uh, disobeyed the laws of God, he sends them into captivity. We see later on in Jeremiah and uh, <coughs> in the Second Kings and all that. Now, this is a question that like, I'll ask it to Steve. Okay? Yes. Now, Steve. Yes. Knowing your friends and knowing yourself, mm -hmm. how would your closest friends rate your faithfulness factor? Like, how faithful are you to God? If I was to call your friends and mm -hmm. just put you in a room separate from them and ask them to rate Steve on a scale of 1 to 10, 1 uh -huh. being the least faithful uh -huh. to God, 10 being the most faithful, where do you think you lie in that scale? Okay. So one thing about my friends are brutally honest. So uh -huh. <laughs> it would be a very honest rating, I mm. believe. Uh, in terms of them, I would probably, let's say, 6.5 out of 10. 6.5 out of yes. 10. Not bad, more than half? More than half, of course. Uh -huh. uh, but there is more to be. There's, there's more to be than Yeah, there's more, more to, to be you done. Than they know. Yeah? There's more to you than they know. Yeah. All right. Seth, how would your friends rate you on a scale of 1 to 10? On um, being faithful to God, how much you obey the commands, how much you are obedient in school. A scale of 1 to 10, where would you lie? I would lie, um, basically, um, like, let me say 9, nine, nine. to 5. Okay. Because, um, actually, in school, uh, most of my teachers really appreciate the work that I do in school. Mm -hmm. So that's um, one of the things that tell mm -hmm. You'll be say, sure about that. I'll say it's 9.5. All right, my activities in church it mm -hmm. has been good, mm -hmm. it has good, been good for me. So that's that places you at a nine, yeah. Nine that, that's really high, okay. Silas, yes, where do you lie? Scale of one to ten. It's a difficult question. <laughs> Uh, okay. What, what do you think, your friends? Right now, you, you're answering as your friends, friends, not as yourself. Yes, as my your friends. friends. Uh -huh. I'd say that that put me at four. A four? Yeah. Do you get de regular detention or what? <laughs> okay, not really. Not really. But, but you, you're somewhere there. Okay. Perhaps <laughs> it's the side I portray when mm -hmm. you're with them. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I think they'd put me at four. They put you at a four. All right. Anyway, that, that brings in a very um, important or begs another question to us. Uh, when we're with our friends and we, when we are at home, some of us tend to have different sides, yeah. right? But um, when you are a Christian, there's only one law that governs you. And that law operates in every single aspect of your life. When you're in school, the Ten Commandments still apply. 
Yes. When you're at home, Ten Commandments apply. In church, same thing. When you're playing basketball for Seth, same thing, right? So um, this is just a question to all of us that we need to have our lives aligned to the commands in a way that if your friends from church met your friends from school, they'd be talking about the same Steve and be like, that's not the Steve I know, right? So um, that's why we have the commands, so that every single time you're doing something, you just look at it and have like a mirror. No, I am doing the right thing. I am doing the wrong thing. Okay. Uh, we'll answer a few questions from the out of the story section. Okay. Um, now, this one question in particular I'd like to ask. All right. This one is from the Monday section. How can you be more like God when you're with your friends? How can you be more like God? And we know that the commandments of God portray his character, who God is. God is loving. God, you know, takes care of his own. How can we be more like God when we're with our friends? Steve. Um, like you said, uh, we ought to emulate God's character in what we do. And this is reflected when we express it fully. Because, you know, sometimes people tend to mask can I say mask themselves with something they're not? Mask, yeah. mm -hmm. In order to, let's say, get, get to somewhere, get to some people, mm -hmm. uh, know some friends and all. So I believe if we express God's character mm -hmm. without, without hiding anything, mm -hmm. just expressing it fully, you'll be able to really show God to your friends, really emulate God wherever you are. True. Yeah. True. And uh, it, it's interesting, thank you for bringing up the aspect of keeping the law of God it brings in the aspect where most of us feel that to receive the full gift of salvation, we have to keep the commandments. But that's the contrary, right? Ellen White says that obedience is a fruit of salvation. We are saved by grace. We're not saved by works. You cannot be doing the right thing every single day and expect that that's when God is going to love you. No, God already loves you. Now, you keeping his commands is out of your love for God. We keep the commandments of God because we love him, not because we want him to love us, all right? And once we understand that God loves us regardless, it's going to be way easier to keep the commands when we love him. Now, let me give a scenario. This is how most Christians or most people in the world approach keeping the laws of God. Have you ever taken a ball... A beach ball, you know how big it is, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Have you taken a beach ball, um, gone to a swimming pool, and tried to submerge the ball while it's filled with air in water? What happens? It doesn't sink. It cannot sink. It's yeah. going to come back up again. Now, this is how Christian life is. There are so many thousands of laws, right? Just go to the ocean. Imagine you have a thousand beach balls, and your task every single day in life is to make sure those balls stay under the water. Now, that's how hard it is when you approach keeping the commandments of God. Commandments of God are like, when you approach them in that way, like a beach ball, keeping them under the water every single time, it's going to be very hard for you. But once you love God, because God says that's the only commandment that matters, love, love for God, love for man. Once you love God and you love your fellow man, then it becomes easy to keep all these other laws that the Lord has said unto us, Okay. Uh, I'd like Steve to read for us Deuteronomy chapter 30, Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 15 to 18. Deuteronomy 30, mm -hmm. verse 15 to 18. Deuteronomy 30, verse 15 to 18. Yes. Okay. And the Bible says, See, I set before you today life and prosperity, death and destruction. For I command you today to love the Lord your God, to walk in obedience with him, to him, and to keep his commands, decrees, and laws. Then you will live and increase, and the Lord your God will bless you in the land you enter in to possess. But if your heart turns away and you're not obedient, and if you're drawn away to bow down to other gods and to worship them, I declare to you this day that you will certainly be destroyed. You will not live long in the land that you are crossing the Jordan to enter and possess. All right, you can proceed all the way to verse 20, so you can cover both concepts at once, 19 okay. and 20. Verse 19 states that, This day 
I call the heavens and earth as witnesses against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Now choose life, that you and your children may live, and that you may love your Lord, and you may love the Lord your God, listen to his voice, and hold fast to him. For the Lord is your life, and he will give you many years in the land he sought to give to your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Amen. Amen. Now, uh, that verse, Moses, when he was speaking to God, when God told Moses that you are not going to enter the promised land, you are going to die because you disobeyed me, Moses was very worried about the children of Israel. So he asked God, God, if I die, who is going to lead these people into the promised land? And that is why the Lord chose Joshua. And we'll see in the next chapter, that's Deuteronomy 31, how Moses laid his hands upon Joshua and just transferred the leadership unto him and the Spirit of God. Now, Moses being a good leader, he loved his people. And remember he said the commandments of God about love for God and love for man. Now, Moses in loving his people, that is why he was worried in who is going to lead them. I mean, God, I love you. That's, what, that's Moses. You know, he's like, God, I love you. I'll accept the punishment you've given to me, but what about your people? Who is going to lead them? Right? And in life, we are faced with so many decisions that we have to make. And as we had said in the beginning, we need to make our decisions based on the Bible. Right? Mm -hmm. And uh, on that note, Silas, Proverbs 3 verse 5. Proverbs 3 verse 5, it mm -hmm. says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. Mm -hmm. Verse 6 and 7. In all the, your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. Mm -hmm. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Mm. In all of our ways, we need to rely on God. Now, question to you, Silas, because you read for us the verse. Is there any um, downside to building one's life on the laws of God? Is there any negative thing about obeying the laws of God? What do you think? Is there anything there's, negative that comes from that? Okay, there's nothing negative. Mm -hmm. Everything is, is po positive. Mm -hmm. Unless you're looking on the side of how people see you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if it's on that side, it will be negative, obviously, because you'll start looking like you're... You're showing them that yeah, I'm you're better more than righteous them. Than mm -hmm. you are. All right. Yeah. So, so it brings there's in, no uh -huh. downside on mm -hmm. how you live your life, how life will be mm -hmm. easy or hard. It will be easy because you're following God's word. Mm -hmm. Sure. But it will mm -hmm. also be hard because the devil is constantly attacking you mm -hmm. so that you can disobey God. Disobey God. True. True. Uh, I like you've brought the aspect where. Some people keep the law of God because they want to seem righteous, right? There's a lesson we'd studied, uh, that should be lesson two, right? Where we talked about how people do the right thing but with the wrong motive in mind. Yeah. So, another question, again. Um, the laws of God. These are laws that were given about 3,000 years ago. Do you think they still apply to us right now, sir? Do you think the laws of God are still relevant to us right now? I mean, these are things that were given 3,000 years ago. Do you think they still apply to us, yes or no? Um, for me, I really think that, um, yes, it mm -hmm. does ap apply mm -hmm. to us. Mm -hmm. um, recently, um, I did um, further research mm -hmm on something that I was working on for a presentation mm -hmm. um, that there was a, a short a short quote and I can't quite remember, remember it, mm -hmm. but it basically said that no matter what you're undergoing mm -hmm. in this life, mm -hmm. prayer is always the key. Amen, amen. Because, um, when you're down, you try to say, oh, let me, let me listen to my favorite song mm -hmm. or le let me listen to my favorite hymn mm -hmm. to cool me down. Mm -hmm. 
like my favorite him is him i have two favorite hymns mm -hmm. um that abide with me mm -hmm. and uh, great is thy faithfulness mm -hmm. the reason as to why i chose uh, great is thy faithfulness it's a song that really speaks to my heart all the time and also abide with me it really makes me happy when i listen to the instrumental version mm -hmm. of abide with me mm -hmm. yeah all right so basically um thanks for that said basically when we are in constant communication with god it's going to be easier to just go through any difficult phase in life all right thank you for that steve uh Seth, uh, steve <laughs> yes what do you think are the laws of god still relevant to us right now yes in mm -hmm. fact very relevant right mm -hmm. now because we've gone into so much sin mm -hmm. that no one really can differentiate between what's right mm -hmm. and what's not right based on what they see and what they look at mm -hmm. so the bible now is like a guideline it gives a standpoint on what is right mm -hmm. and what is not right what is truth mm -hmm. and what is not truth so in that in the in the line of that i believe even though the words are very ancient mm. for almost 5000 years as you said yeah it is still very very relevant true to what to today amen amen i like that and uh, you can also be um how do i put this most countries actually each and every country that has a constitution constitutions go through very many amendments right you make a law two three weeks later people are like uh, this law is just too much we need to amend it we need to change it but have you ever had any single time that the 10 commandments were revised no it cannot happen because the law of the lord is perfect paul says mm -hmm. the law of the lord is perfect um i think it's uh, solomon in the book of ecclesiastes he says the law of the lord is like honey sweet to the mouth once you um keep the laws of the lord your life is going to be sweet you know it's going to be easy it's not going to, it's, it doesn't mean like it's always going to be easy in the sense that you're never going to face any temptations no but the devil is going to always tempt you but in god's eyes he's going to make your path straight all your decisions that you're making they're going to be easy for you because you keep the law of the lord and that is why we see that our title is law and love revisited god wanted to remind the israelites what he told them before now as we come to a close i just like to admonish us okay that the law of the lord is not meant to be a burden the israelites took to it as a burden and that is why we see in the later times in the history of jerusalem when the israelites decided to reject the law of god that is by killing jesus and killing his prophets the lord sent utter destruction as promised through moses and we see that jerusalem was destroyed and the hebrews were scattered all over the world now as the new spiritual israel this is a an a, a point to each and every one of us we need to understand that we are not saved by keeping the law as i had said before but god already loves us and by us accepting his salvation it's going to make it easier for us to keep the law of the lord all right so i uh, will just finish with the father insight quote alaska silas read that for us father insight as we close father insight says true obedience is the outworking of the principle within it springs from the love of righteousness the love of the law of god the essence of all righteousness is loyalty to our redeemer mm, true that, that quote just sums it all up you know being obedient comes out when it's easy once you accept the law of god once you accept christ's sacrifice you on the cross keeping the law becomes easy now we'll close our lesson at that thank you so much for being with us thank you our panelists uh, that is lesson four for you so we'll join us as we'll uh, be looking at lesson five in the next week but before we leave silence pray with us let's pray our father who dwells above in heaven we thank you for this day thank you for the light you've given us in this lesson as we 
the if here we pray that you may help us apply these things in Jesus name i pray amen amen, amen. amen.